in alhamdulillah without a doubt certainly all thanks praise and gratitude belongs to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala nahmaduhu for that reason we praise him we thank him we show our gratitude to him and we ask for help on matters that is in the, uh, under our control and matters is outside of our control whenever we ask for help and we get it and we have shortcomings we don't complete it as it's supposed to be completed naturally we ask for forgiveness we ask that make make that as part of our routine constantly nastaghfiruhu ask forgiveness from allah when this is the critical part that we all hear this khutbah start the same way every single week and every one of these points takes time to explain one of the things with the recent events that we are we have been facing is now that when I tawakkal alayhi we put our full trust in Allah what does that mean? we'll explore that a little bit inshallah we don't question the wisdom of Allah with a very little knowledge and a really insignificant experience that we have to have the audacity to question the wisdom of Allah is mind-boggling. وَنَشْهَدُ أَنْ لَا إِلَهِ إِلَّا اللَّهُ وَحْدَهُ لَا شَرِيكَ لَهُ وَنَشْهَدُ أَنَّ مُحَمَّدًا عَبْدُهُ وَرَسُولُهُ قال الله تعالى في القرآن الكريم Allah says in his book يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا O oh believers اتَّقُوا الله Be mindful of Allah be conscious of Allah. Be aware of Allah in a manner that you do not do something to disappoint Him. Mostly this has been translated as fear Allah. In Arabic, there are at least 15, some 19 different words for fear. And each one has a specific action to it, a specific reason for it. This fear is fear of disappointing Allah. Fear of doing something that Allah does not like. After He asks you, He commanded you not to do it. Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu, ittaqullah. Haqqa tuqatihi, the way He deserves it. That's a huge topic to, to, to discuss. Wala tamutunna illa wa antum muslimun. The emphatic part of this word, tamutunna, is in this ayah. Don't you dare absolutely don't you dare ever find yourself in a manner that you forgot what Allah commanded you to do and you find yourself departing this world while you forgot this rule وَلَا تَمُوتُنَّ إِلَّا وَأَنْتُمْ مُسْلِمُونَ under no circumstance no circumstance you die while you're not Muslim which means you forgot what Allah told you to have consciousness of Him at all the time this will be a reminder. I'm not, you all know, I'm just one of you. I'm just an average Joe. Um, just a reminder, a few things that I would like to, I was pondering upon, I'd like to share with all of you, inshallah, with your permission, my dear brothers and sisters. I was uh, looking into one of the hadiths um, last week. Hadith al Qudsi. Here's your first homework. Those of you who have been with me on this area, I usually give homework. I don't care if it's khutbah or not, I give you khut homework, and here's your first homework. If you do not know what hadith Qudsi is, ask your father, your mother, your sister, your brother, your uncle in a, in a masjid. Someone will explain to you what that is. And the hadith Qudsi says this. Qasamtu salati bayna wa bayna abdi nisfain. Wa li abdi ma sa'al. Allah says, I have divided the prayer, the prayer, the things that you are I engage five, five times on a daily basis, in two equal halves, exactly equal, exactly half, 50%, 50%. Half is for my slave and half is for me, Allah says. And here's the best part. 
قسمت صلاتي نصفين exactly half ولعبدي ما سأل and for my slave is whatever he is asking for whatever he asks he's gonna get it what does that mean if someone tells you I'm gonna get you what you want like I made a casual promise to my son whose birthday is today happy birthday said whatever you want I'm gonna get you today inshallah but Allah says you will get what you want what you're asking for Ponder upon this, my dear brothers and sisters. Ponder upon this. When Allah makes a promise, that promise is will, will never, ever get broken. It is as solid as anything you can imagine when Allah makes that promise to you. And He has made this promise in the Quran, in the, in the Hadith. First of all, Salat. There's a lot of discussions in here. I'm just, don't think of another khutbah, but Salat, it's not, it's not what it is. When my slave says, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. When my slave says, Alhamdulillah, guess what Allah says? Have you heard when they said, prayer, salah is communication with Allah? You must have heard that. I heard that from, since I was a little kid. My dad used to tell me, it's communication with Allah. You're talking to God. And I never understood what that means until I came across this hadith. Allah is communicating to you and I directly as long as we are conscious of it, as long as we bring ourselves to that level. Allah says this, when my slave standing here and says, Alhamdulillah, Allah responds, Hamadani Abdi. Allah says with pride, my slave praised me, my slave thanked me. Me. SubhanAllah. The direct communication of Allah. I have to qualify something. A lot of translations say servant. A lot of translations say servant. And I, I'm not a shaykh or anything, you know that I'm no, nowhere near being any knowledgeable person. But I strongly disagree with that. Abd doesn't mean slave, doesn't mean servant. Abd does not mean servant. A lot of us try to be politically correct and be translated that way. In Fatiha, in, in the Surah Al Fatiha, the critical relationship Allah lays out for you and I is He is the Rabb, He is your master, and you are the Abd, you are the slave of that master. When we say Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim, Maliki Yawmiddin, Iyaka Na'abudu. Just stop right there. That is exactly half. What Iyaka Nasta'een starts the other half, that is for the slave. The first half we praise and glorify Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What is Iyaka Na'abudu means? Iyaka Na'abudu means, Ya Allah. You're standing and saying humbly, Ya Allah. Here I am standing in front of you. I give myself totally, without any question, without any condition, to your worship. I am here trying to understand you are my Rabb. We just said Rabb al Alameen, you're my master. Here I am standing and I please accept my humble request to become your Abd. First and foremost, we have to, we're declaring that every day. Get up in the morning, get out of the, get out of the nice bed, warm bed, come there, and you declare that to Allah. This is what you say to Allah, to your master, to my master, the one who created you and I, the one who gave you the ability to come here on Friday, on day of, day of Jum'ah, on this Friday, so that you press that, activate that chip that is right there on the ground, so you'll be forgiven. He did that to you. He allowed you. You are declaring to him that. Then you go back around your around your day. You come back again. A few hours later, you declare again. That about ten times. You do that four times in Fajr. You do it ten times again. Then you go back about your life again. Come back and declare the same thing again four times. You and I can understand what are we declaring constantly. What are we saying? The, the formula has been given. Allah says, do your part first, then ask for help. Then your part starts. 
as the hadith said. You're asking for help. What does that mean? What kind of help? The way Allah put in here, the way He put it, what yaka nasta'in, it says, if I can translate it in one way, it says, help! You're, you're screaming for help from the bottom of your heart. You're asking for help. You don't have to spell it out what it is. You and I have tons of issues, tons of issues. We have all kinds of things that we want. We want to get married. We want to have a promotion in a job. We want to have a better life. We want to have a better house. We are trying to buy that BMW. We are trying to get married to that girl that you are interested. We are married with issues. Anything that you have, you're asking for help. Allah reduce it to this help. Out of all those, he said, Allah says, if you get this thing down, all your issues are wiped out. You have no more issues. As long as you understand this specific ask. Among saying help. Here's an, here's an area we can ask for help. Came across one of my brothers uh, before a khutbah said, how about that election that remind me of the surah, this ayah. <coughs> Listen to the ayah. إِنَّ النَّاسَ قَدْ جَمَعُوا لَكُمْ فَخْشَوْهُمْ إِنَّ النَّاسَ قَدْ جَمَعُوا لَكُمْ Have you seen the TV? Have you seen those things? Have you seen the map of U.S.? It is red! Everyone is red. These people have gathered to get you. They're all here. A little bit on the, on the right side, on the east coast, a little bit on the west coast. That's a little kind of bluish. The rest is red. These are all here. They're going to get you. They have gathered right for the right reason. You're a Muslim. Hey, got to get you. In the Nasa, without a doubt, people will say, Qad jama'u lakum. Lots of people have gathered. Lots of them have gathered here. Fakhshawhum. You got to do one thing. There's nothing else you can do except fear them. Fear them to whatever that your life depends on it. They're going to deport you. They're going to register you. They're going to put you on the wrong side of the wall. They're going to do all sorts of things to you. Fear them. That's what they were said. What, what did the Muslims say? When that thing came to them at that time, فَزَادُوهُمْ <laughs> إِيمَانًا All the threats that they heard, all the things they heard, had, didn't do anything to those who were Muslims except increase them in their belief. فَزَادُوهُمْ إِيمَانًا Increase them in their belief. And guess what else they did? فَقَالُوا حَسْبُنَ اللَّهُ وَنِعْمَ الْوَكِيلُ Here's the phrase, there's the next homework for you. Learn it, believe it, make it part of your routine. حَسْبُنَ اللَّهُ وَنِعْمَ الْوَكِيلُ Make it part of your routine. Say it all the time. What are you saying when you say that? Allah is sufficient for us. I don't care what you say. I don't care what your threats are. Allah is good enough, sufficient for me. And He is the best of disposer of all affairs. Hasbunallahu wa ni'mal wakil. When um, there was a talk here on uh, Monday night or so, I don't know if, how many of you attended and uh, how many of you did not attend. I'm just going to quote one hadith when we wrap this up, inshallah. Allah is telling you and I, when we sit in a khutbah, when we on Allah, we want to put our trust in Allah. This is what you do. You need to start believing in it. It doesn't mean do foolish things. I'm not advocating to do foolish things. That's not what it means. But it means you be aware and mindful of your surroundings at all times. And trust in Him. Everything comes from Him. The wisdom comes from Him. That's what you gotta do. That's what you gotta understand and say, Hasbunallah wa ni'wal makil. Allah is sufficient for me. Allah is sufficient for me. If you and I understand, give you a flavor of Fatiha. Fatiha allows you, Fatiha allows you to break all chains. 
When you say, Iyaka na'budu, Ya Allah, I am dependent on you. That's what you say. Help me, I'm dependent on you. What does that mean? All the other dependency, wash away. It's not important anymore. Not important anymore. Cultural dependencies, so long as it contradicts with your religious affairs, not important anymore. Social dependencies, fashion dependencies, you have to wear something with a white logo under your arm, on your shoes, on somewhere. Meaningless. Absolutely meaningless. One of the brothers came to me from last khutbah. I'm not trying to bash on anyone. Came and looked at me and said, look at yourself. You look like a Christian standing there with the way you dress. I said, alhamdulillah, this is the land I live. This is how I dress. If there's anything, it does not Islamic whatsoever. You need to go Islamic dress. Like, subhanAllah, I haven't uh, seen a picture of Islamic dress. It's all cultural dependencies. This is my land, this is how I dress, this is what I do. I resonate with this more than I resonate with Shalwa Kamis or something else. Yaka na'budu frees you up from all these things. Ibn Abbas, one of the amazing scholars of Islam, when he was a young man, Prophet said this, <clears throat> Read it to you. One day, I was riding behind the Prophet sallallahu peace and blessing of Allah be upon him. When he said, young man, I will teach you some words. Be mindful of Allah and he will take care of you. Be mindful of him and you shall find him at your side. If you ask, ask Allah. And if you need help, seek help from Allah, from your Creator. Know that if the whole world were to gather together in order to help you, ain't gonna happen. This is not gonna happen. No one will be able to help you except Allah. Know that the entire map of US becomes red and they're coming after you and the whole world they're here to hurt you. They will not be able to do so unless it has been decreed by Allah. This means the total dependencies to Allah, understanding and putting your trust in Him, it ends like this. The pen has been lifted, that means it has been written and the pages are dry. It is, it is done deal. No one can change it. إن الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم. الله سيز القرآن. إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي. يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد Also, elsewhere in the Quran you find Allah says إن الله يأمر يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبعض لعلكم تذكرون. Your third homework. Find this ayah from the Quran. I think it's 1692, chapter 16, ayah 92, surah 1692. I think somewhere on there. I think it might be correct. You hear it all the time in the khutbah. Allah is commanding you. Shake up yourself a little bit, understand. This is not a casual suggestion. Allah is commanding you to do three things and avoid three things. I'm gonna say it in Arabic only. This is your homework to find a translation in English. Inna Allah ya'mur bal adl wal ihsan wa ita'id al qurba wa yanha an al fahshah wal munkar wal baghi. Ya'adakum la'allakum tadakaroon wa aqim as-salah.